As we saw, creating products with the help of Mongoose works fine now. Let's now also make sure to be able to get the products stored in our database. This means we follow again the same core logic we had when we worked with the MongoDB driver. So we now create another constant, um, call it again, get products. Again, an asynchronous task with request, response, and next. Into this arrow function, we pass in another JavaScript object. And in this JavaScript object, we again need a constant because we will use this constant as part of our response as I want to get back the documents stored in the database. So this constant could be called products here. Now getting products is different than adding them. Before it made sense to instantiate the product model and call the save method on the created object. But now we have no created object, right? We want to get products stored in our products collection instead. Keep in mind that all those products were therefore created based on instances of the product model. So what we did in the create product function. Since that's the case, Mongoose gives us an easy way of finding documents created based on this model. We can use some static methods on the model constructor function itself. In our case, the find method is what we need. And regarding this find method, there are some things to keep in mind. Um, the first thing is, as you can see it here, find is a so-called static method used directly on our constructor function. Therefore, we also used find already in our MongoDB logic here with get products. Here, we used find and as I told you, find returns a so-called cursor, which then allows us to iterate through the different documents stored in the database. And we could turn it into an array with the two array method here. Now the mongoose find method, this is a specific find method related to mongoose, returns an array by default. So there is no need to convert this into an array, well, as we have an array already. We could also get a cursor here if you want to by adding the cursor method. With this, you would be able to turn this array back into a cursor as we had it in the MongoDB logic. The last important thing about find is that here with save, you remember, we had a promise or save returned a promise here. This is not the case for find. This Mongo specific find does not return a real promise, but kind of a promise. What this means is that you can still use async await here, but in the end, it's not a real promise. If you want to turn this into a real promise, you can add the exec method here. This will turn it into a real promise. And talking about promises or asynchronous tasks, we should also add await right here. So this is it already. Again, very lean code, I would say. The only thing that's missing now is our response. I said it already. For this, we will simply return our products stored in our database. We are almost done now. The export is missing. So name it get products and save this in our mongoose.js file. And now comment back in our get products code in the app.js file. So if we go back to Postman now and create a new get request here and send it, we get back our product and important with find, we get back all our products. So if we would add our banana once again, 1.99, create this banana quickly. And now again, send our get request. You see, we get both of these documents that we stored in our database. And that's actually almost the end of this refresher. With that, you saw the core idea behind MongoDB and also why Mongoose makes our lives a lot easier and allows us to really focus onto the core business logic of our app. There is one thing we didn't talk about so far though, and this is this ID property right here. What's this actually? 